Madhava Punjabiha Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Sodanandana, Vajajana Ranjana, Yasodanandana, Vajajana Ranjana, Yasodanandana, Vajajana Ranjana, Yamuna Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Vallabha Girivana Dari Sodanandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yasodanandana Bhajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
राम राम हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada. Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Jai Om Vishnupad Panamahangsa Prabhu Jankacharya Asatosra Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Sila Isi Bhaktivanta Swami Sila Prabhupada Ki Anandi Gaurabhai Srinu Ki Jai Namacharya Sila Haridas Thakura Ki Jai Discount Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Prem Sikha Host Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gradha Shivasati Gaur Bhaktivanta Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopya Shamakun Radhakun Giri Gopanang Ki Jai Shri Vandava Nam Ki Jai, Shri Maya Panav Nam Ki Jai, Ganga Maya Ki Jai, Jamuna Maya Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Sama Veda Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Hari Nama Sankirtan Ki Jai, Go Premanandi. All glory to some of the devotees, 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 all glory to some of the He, did he read two verses yesterday? Who gave class yesterday? It was 39 yesterday. Today is 39. I thought it was going to be 38. All right. It's okay. I'll manage. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, this morning we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 6, Chapter 16. King Chittaketu meets the Supreme Lord, text number 39. Kama, Kama Diyas, Tvai, Ratita, Na, na Parama Rohanti Yata Karamba Bijani Ganatmani Agunamaye Guna Gunato Sya Dvandva Jhalani Kamadiyas Tvai Rachita Na parama rohanti yata karamba bijani Jhanatman yaguna maye Guna ganatosya dhvand jhalani Kamandiyas tvai rachita Na parama rohanti Yatha karam bijani Gyanatman yagun namaye 
Gunaganatosya Dhundjalani Kamadiyas Tvai Rachita Naparamaranti Yata Karambhijani Gyanatman Yagamaye Gunaganatosya Dhundjalani a tough Majiji. Kamadiya, desires for sense gratification. Toyi, in you. Rachita, performed. Na, not. Parama, O Supreme Personality of Godhead. Rohanti, do grow. Produce other bodies. Yata, just as. Karamba Bijani, sterilized or fried seeds. Yana Atmani, in you, whose existence is in full knowledge. Aguna Maya, who is not affected by the material qualities. Guna Ganata, from the material qualities. Asya, of a person, Dvanda Jhalani, the networks of duality. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki. O Supreme Lord, if persons obsessed with material desires for sense gratification through material opulence worship you, who are the source of all knowledge, and are transcendental to material qualities, they are not subject to material rebirth, just as sterilized or fried seeds do not produce plants. Hmm, interesting. Living entities are subjected to the repetition of birth and death because they are conditioned by material nature. But 
since you are transcendental, one who is inclined to associate with you, in transcendence escapes the conditions of material nature. Please repeat, O Supreme Lord, if persons obsessed with material desires for sense gratification through material opulence worship you, who are the source of all knowledge and are transcendental to material qualities, they are not subject to material rebirth. Just as sterilized or fried seeds do not produce plants. Living entities are subjected to the repetition of birth and death because they are conditioned by material nature. But since you are transcendental, one who is inclined to associate with you in transcendence escapes the conditions of material nature. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> it says that even if a person is obsessed with material desires for sense gratification, worships you, becomes free, repetition of birth and death. Well, you get purified, of course, yeah. as, as one continues. Purport. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Wherein the Lord says, Janma karma chame divyang evang yo veti tatvata chaktva dehang punar janma naitima eti sorjana. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in the material world, but attains to my eternal abode. If one simply engages in Krishna consciousness to understand Krishna, he surely becomes immune to the process of repeated birth and death. As clearly stated in Bhagavad Gita, Chakja Dehang Punar Janma Naiti, such a person, simply by engaging in Krishna consciousness or understanding the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna, becomes quite fit to return home back to Godhead. Even those who are obsessed with material desires may also come to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead so steadily that they go back home, back to Godhead. The fact is that if one comes to Krishna consciousness, although he may have many material desires, he becomes increasingly attracted to the lotus feet of Krishna through association or associating with the Supreme Lord by chanting His holy name. The Supreme Lord and His holy name are identical. Thus, he becomes uninterested in attachment to material enjoyment. The perfection of life is to be uninterested in material enjoyment and interested in Krishna. If one comes to Krishna consciousness somehow or other, even for material gain, the result is that it will be liberated. Kamad Vishad Mahyat Snehat. Whether for the satisfaction of material desires, because of the influence of envy, because of fear, because of affection, or because of any other reason, if he comes to Krishna, his life is successful. Omigana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Jaksram Militam Jaina Tasma Sri Gravena Maha. Mukram ko to bacha lang pangun hung hai te grim. Yet kripa tadaham bande, shigurum dinatadanam. Vanchikapa tubius cha, kripa sindu deva cha. Pajitanam pavanavio, Vaishnavavio namona maha. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. So here Prabhupada mentions that if one engages in Krishna consciousness or understands Krishna, he becomes fit to return home back to Godhead. This is real fitness. Right? 
thousands and millions of people, are, they go to the to the gym to get fit, but actually they get they, they get unfit <laughs> because they become more and more in the bodily conception of life. This is how to become really fit, spiritually fit. Chant sixteen rounds a day, follow the four regular principles, and we become fit. Prabhupada said, if this becomes instituted around the world, following the four regular principles, chanting 16 rounds a day, the demons will die. <laughs> Prabhupada. So, people are very enthusiastic to, as Prabhupada mentioned, they're very enthusiastic to engage in sense gratification, but if one engages in Krishna consciousness, then they get purified. We get purified. Like now, so many people, millions of people, again, millions of people, they're very enthusiastic. Utsaha. Very enthusiastic for what? Sense gratification. Yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> sense gratification. Very enthusiastic to engage in sense gratification. And utsaha nischa, they're very confident that this will bring them happiness. Sense gratification. And therefore, they, they're, they're working out very determined. And they work very hard, two, three jobs sometimes, to get that sense gratification, to get that little pleasure. Yeah. Utsaha nustya dharya. And they're, and they're, and they're what is it? It's patient. Some of them. Most of them aren't so patient, <laughs> but some of them are very patient. You know? They even go to the universities, they you know, study and study. You know, sometimes eight years, university, to get that sense gratification. You know, that name, fame, money. Utsaha nistya daya tat tat karma. And uh, they engage in activities that are not uh, favorable for devotional service. <laughs> they do everything that's not favorable. You know? So devotees are engaged in so many activities favorable for devotional service. But the non-devotees, they don't want to do anything that's favorable for devotional service. They do everything that's favorable for sense gratification, for increasing their illusion, their bodily identification, maya. Utsaha nistya tat karma pavart sangha chagat satovrite Give up association with devotees. Don't associate with devotees. <laughs> with devotees, we only want to associate with devotees. And Lord Chaitanya said that, the, that the, the greatest pain, the greatest suffering, is to not be in the association of devotees. It's the greatest suffering. Because by the association of devotees, we, uh, we remember Krishna. We get purified. Uh, and Prabhupada says, with the progress of Krishna consciousness, the reaction of the change of the heart is that we become detached. We become detached. So there's a reaction. If we engage in devotional service, there's a very positive reaction. We get purified. We become detached. And gradually, we more and more develop our love for Krishna. This is a, another reaction, right? Positive karma, right? Like if someone does uh, bad activities, he gets a bad reaction. Some people do good activities. They give charity or they help the poor, you know, different things that people are doing. They get a good reaction, but that's actually bad because they have to come back. They got to take birth again to get the good reaction. So we're interested in, in pure activities by, where we get a, by which we get a pure reaction. We don't come back anymore. We go back to Krishna. So this is the, the best reaction. Yeah. So therefore we should be very enthusiastic to engage in devotional service. And Prabhupada said, even if you're not enthusiastic, just act enthusiastic. It'll come. <laughs> It'll come. Just act enthusiastic and associate with others who are enthusiastic. Yeah. Then you become enthusiastic. Enthusiasm, uh, confidence, 
How do we get this confidence that this is the that this is the right path? By hearing, you know, by hearing the words of Srila Prabhupada, who's who's so confident. You know, the acharyas are so confident. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the Bhakti No Thakur, just by hearing the the words from these great acharyas, we also become confident. So much so that we lose our taste, as Prabhupada mentions, that we lose our taste for sense gratification. And we understand that the real happiness, the real taste, is in service to Krishna, not service to Maya. We've been serving Maya for so long, too long, yeah, too long. Better serve Krishna. We've been serving Maya for so long, and here we are again, stuck in the material world. Repetition of birth and death, samsara. So we have this opportunity to take shelter of Krishna, you know, to get a taste for Krishna consciousness, yeah. and to be patient. We're trying for the, for the highest goal. There's no higher goal than... Uh, to be Christian conscious. So therefore, we should take it very seriously. This word, should, it's, very, it's, a, big, it's a big word in, in Prabhupada's teachings. I looked it up 73,000 times. Yeah, 73,000 times you find it in the folio. You know, Prabhupada's lectures and, and uh, you know, the books. and 73,000, Dravidas looking it up, checking. <laughs> That's a, lot of, that's a lot of shoulds. So what's the, the ultimate should? We should surrender to Krishna. That's right. Yeah, got to surrender to Krishna. And uh, this is the process. And then in the Upadesha Amrita it goes on, Atyahara prayasascha prajapo niyamagra jana sangas taloyam cha sadbir bhaktir vinoshiti. That now we're trying to advance in Krishna consciousness, but we have to be careful. This is Maya's kingdom. There's a lot of Maya, so we can easily be distracted. Yeah. So atyahara shouldn't eat too much or collect too much. Yeah. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had this one disciple that had was, he was rather overweight. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said to him, What is Krishna going to do with your big belly? <laughs> In other words, go on a diet. Don't eat so much. Yeah. <laughs> so, and collecting too much. It's a nice thing about Krishna consciousness. We live a simple life. Yeah. We don't need much. Karmas, they got so many things. You know, it's like so many things coming up. You know. Consumer society. It's like you go to the, to the Walmart, or you go to the Target or something. Practically 99% of the stuff there we don't even need. <laughs> right? We don't even need it. They, they have this, uh, this uh, advertisement, so much advertisement, commercials. You, know? you got to have this, you got to have this, you got to have this. We don't need huh? Huh? FOMO. FOMO. Fear of missing out. <laughs> competition, yes, competition. Yeah, the, 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 the Jones is next door. Hey, honey, look what they got over there. Are we going to tolerate that? Come on. We got to do better than them. <laughs> yeah. So we don't need so much. Atyahara parasyascha. Prajapo niyamagraha. Atyahara parasyascha. This is over-endeavoring for mundane things. So what's an example of over-endeavoring for mundane things? Well, actually, there's an example of Prabhupada. You know, back in, uh, in uh, I think about the mid-70s, in, in, in Atlanta, there was a devotee, Balavanta, who uh, was running for office, mayor of Atlanta. It's a big position. So he had so many people engaged in that, and some of them had to be taken off book distribution. 
So Prabhupada heard about that. He said, it's too much endeavor. Too much endeavor for a mundane thing to be a major. It's kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah. He started on his instruction, but it became too much. Over-endeavor. It became an over-endeavor. And when Prabhupada saw that it was an over-endeavor for such a mundane thing, he said, all right, forget it. Tell him to go back on a book distribution. That's better. <laughs> Caught on book distribution. Actually, what's interesting is how Balavante, he was a GBC and a lawyer, and, and how he became a devotee is very interesting. He was in an airport, and a devotee offered him a book. And he was looking at it, and Balavante just walked away with it. And the devotee said, well, we tried to get a donation for it. And he said, I'll read it. If I like it, I'll send you a donation. He read it and gave his life. Good donation. <laughs> Prana Arthur Diavaja, you know, give your life. So that's how he, uh, he joined. And the, but the devotee was thinking, ah, the guy stole the book. You know? <laughs> no, he just wanted to read it and find out if it's good enough to, to give something for it. And he found out it's good enough to give something, gave his life. So, this is the, uh, the power of Srila Prabhupada's books. My book is out now. I was just reading it yesterday, and I was reading it how Vaisheshika Prabhu joined. Quite amazing. He was 16 years old, and he said, I was a Mayavadi. <laughs> Everything is Brahman. So a friend of his was out somewhere, and some, some devotee jumped up in front of him and offered him a, a BTG. And he wasn't interested, but he thought, yeah, maybe my friend will be interested. He, he gave him a quarter for the BTG, and he went in the, to Vaisheshika Prabhu's door and knocked on the door. And Vaisheshika, he wouldn't answer. And, and his friend said, I know you're in there. I know you, I got something for you. Here, I'll leave it at the door. Because Vaisheshika Prabhu was thinking, He's, he's me, I'm him. Why should I answer the door? Yeah. We're all one, we're all the same. <laughs> I'm him, he's me. <laughs> so then he thought, all right, let me go see what he gave me. So he, 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 was a BT, so he opened the door and he, and he got the BTG and he saw, when he saw the picture of Prabhupada, he said, I, I paid obeisances. And he understood this is my guru. I mean, talking about picking up from past life, you know. And his parents said to him, I don't know where you got all this religious fever from. They were both atheists. <laughs> his mother and father were atheists. And he comes out to just be a, 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 a giant spiritualist. You know, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Whereas other people, they're, they're born into nice Vaishnava families and they get to read Bhagavad Gita and they get, you know, right from the beginning of life. And then when they grow up, zero interest. You know even become atheists sometimes. It's like amazing how, how people's minds work, you know. And, uh, and there's another amazing uh, story in the, in, the, in the book of this uh, devotee. He was uh, going door to door, book distribution, in Russia, Ruski. And uh, he offered some books and he said, no, no, I'm not interested. I only, read, I only read books of one author. I don't want to hear anything else from anybody else. And, and the devotee said, well, but what if these are better? No, no, they're not better. I forgot his name. Said, I forgot his name, she said. But can I, can I see the book? She said, all right, come on, you can look at it. She said, this, book, this big uh, bookshelf. He was thinking, boy, she must have had a lot of books before. There was just one book there, Easy Journey to Other Planets. <laughs> and he said, my books are the same. You know, he's the same author. I, I have all these books. He said, oh, really? Then give me all of them. <laughs> so she increased her, uh, her bookshelf. So, uh, and there's another instance there of uh, Parameshwar Prabhu. He was uh, distributing books at one university, and he approached a group, maybe about five students, and offered the science of self-realization. And one of the boys said, that book is amazing. That book is amazing. 
I used to be an atheist and I hated people. I read that book yesterday. And now I believe in God and I love people. <laughs> and he told all his friends, you guys got to get this book. I read it yesterday for hours. I was reading it. It's like, wow, this is amazing. And then me and my friend, we stayed up all night just talking about it. And, uh, of course, all his friends, they bought books. And this person, he gave him, he gave Paramesh for $50 and didn't, didn't even ask for a book. But, he, of course, he gave him more books. But this is, a, this is appreciation. This is like, there's people out there that are really appreciating Prabhupada's books. So, therefore, we have to get them out. We have to get these books out. You know, get the, the mercy of Krishna, the mercy of Srila Prabhupada out to the people. This is what is, this is what is most needed in the world. This Krishna concept, because people they're wasting their life. Atyahar payasya prajalpo. They're talking so much nonsense. It's like I walked by this. Uh, I was doing a little walk this morning, and uh, listened to lecture of Prabhupada. And I went by this church, and there was so much talking going on in the church. But I went and I just went a little close. Just Prajapa. <laughs> just nonsense. It's a church. But there's so much nonsense. I mean, what to speak of those who aren't religious? Yeah, so much. And what is this? It's described that those who are talking Prajapa, what are they inviting? The frog of death, right? The frog is croaking, and the snake hears the croaking. And that's the cause of his death. So, so much prajapa, so much nonsense talk, wasting uh, this, this human form of life. So by giving these books out, they get an opportunity to hear what is most important about Krishna, about the soul, about the goal of life. Atyahari prayasya cha prajapa niyamagraha. It, it, we, we're following so many rules and regulations, but what's the purpose? To get purified. To get purified. This is the this is the goal. Jana sangas, so that we have to give up bad association. Uh, it's like it's amazing. Queen Kunti, <laughs> Queen Kunti, she prayed to Krishna. When am I going to give up my attraction to my family members? Now, who are her family members? The Pandavas, the five Pandavas. Like, they're all pure devotees. But I was listening to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, not that she wanted to give up the association of the purity, but this idea that they're my sons. They're not her sons. It's just like we have parents and we have brothers and sisters, but they're not our brothers and sisters and parents. <laughs> Christians are father, our real, our real siblings are in the spiritual world. And they're wondering, hey, where'd my friends go? <laughs> so we're trying to go back to our, to our real family. Yeah. But to do that, it's, it's very conducive, it's very good if we do the family business, <laughs> which is book distribution. Yeah. Krishna's very pleased. Yaidang paramangu yang mud bhakti subhadhasyasi bhaktim mayam paramkrita mamivaisya yasangsaya Krishna says, there's no one more dear to me than that person who is giving this knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. Because uh, this is giving people an opportunity to wake up, to wake up from their illusion of material existence. You know, it's like people have amnesia. They've forgotten who they are, living in illusion. It's like this amazing story. Some of you have heard this, but it's, it's an amazing story. There was a student uh, at a university, and he was riding his bike, and and he uh, he crashed, and, and he hit his head, and he he had total amnesia, total amnesia, and didn't know where to go, did, just didn't know anything. So he's walking, and the devotee sees him and asks, "Hey, how's it going? Where are you from?" "I don't know." I just hit my head, total amnesia, I don't know anything. And they always say, well, I'll tell you who you are. You're the eternal servant of Krishna. <laughs> and he said, well, well, good, now I know something. So then uh, 
he took him under his wing, this devotee took him under his wing. He taught him all about Krishna consciousness and uh, became a devotee. Good book distributor. Became Omkar. Yeah, became Omkar. So, and practically everybody in the world, they have this problem. You know, amnesia, forgotten. So, book distribution means that we're reminding them. Just like we all had amnesia. We didn't know what the heck was going on. Then we got this knowledge. Now, we're, we, ha we're, we haven't completely recovered <laughs> from this amnesia, but we're gradually, we're getting this understanding of who I really am, that I'm the soul. So this process of Krishna consciousness, it's actually we're, we're renovating the heart. Yeah. It's like when, when, they, when there's old buildings, what they do is when there's old buildings, they call it gutting the building. Just taking everything out except for the walls. They're just gutting it and then they put the new stuff in. So that's what we're doing. We're gutting our mind, getting all the junk out, <laughs> getting all the junk out of our mind, getting all the junk out of our heart all the garbage, and we're replacing that with Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. There's another nice story in the book. This, the person, he, uh, it was a similar situation. He said, he told the devotee, you know, I was an atheist. Didn't believe in God, just, just wasn't interested. Now, from reading your book, I believe in God. I believe He's a person and that He is Krishna. <laughs> this is the power of these books. You know. So somehow we have to uh, get this knowledge out. It's going quite well. Actually, I'm sure Prabhupada's very pleased because still, you know, so, so 46 years 47 years after Prabhupada's departure, still about 9 million books are going out every year yeah, around the world. It was very auspicious. And Prabhupada, he, his, his anxiety was, will you be able to continue? Will it continue? It's like he was, well, the Giriraj Swami, right? Will it continue without me? What was the exact word Prabhupada said? Will it go on without me? And Giriraj Swami said, yes, 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 Prabhupada. And then he asked him, how? <laughs> he said, well, if we're sincere, Prabhupada, if we're determined, and Prabhupada said, intelligence and determination, right? Was it intelligence and organization? Intelligence and organization. We've got to be organized. And we have to use our intelligence. How to, to continue on. He said, we should, we should tax our brain and how to distribute more books. Always thinking how to do more, how to do more. It's like Vaisesha Prabhu again, he's just like, he's, he's like the incarnation of taxing your brain. <laughs> and how to distribute more books. He's always coming up, he's just, he's just always thinking of other ways you know, to, to get the books out. So we're very fortunate you know, to, to have such uh, great devotees blessing us with their association and encouraging us to distribute more books. So this Upadeshamrita, it's, it's so nice, gives so much guidance on how we can grow in spiritual life. Uh, actually, the first verse is va Vacho Vegam, one who is able to control the urge to speak. Yeah. To speak about Krishna, there's an austerity of speech. And, and the, the, the austerity is it's to speak that which is uh, pleasing, anud vegam, kurang vakyam, to speak that which is not agitating to others, anud vegam, kurang satyam, to speak that which is truthful, priyam, to speak that which is pleasing, to speak that which is beneficial, and to always be repeating the Vedic literatures. This is the austerity of speech. Vacho Vegam, one who is able to control the urge to speak. The mind's demands. The mind has so many demands. We got to do this. You got to do that. Got to do. That. It's like sometimes you might be chanting Japa, and the mind says, "Oh, you do this, let's do this." <laughs> you got to shut up. I'm trying to chant my Japa. Just <laughs> the mind is just demanding so many things. 
that we got to, to as, as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, you had to beat the mind, had to beat the mind, and just focus, got to focus on Krishna. Just like Japa, that's what it means, you got to focus. You know? And therefore, many, many devotees that have been giving Japa seminars for years, and, and uh, many of them say the best way to chant Japa, just sit down, and just and just meditate on the mantra. Yeah. You could have a picture or something. You have a slideshow, you get a slideshow to him. I'm trying to work it out still. <laughs> to help us remember Krishna. Bhaktinoda Thakur, he had the Hare Krishna mantra in front of him. He would read it. So I, I, when I heard that, I said, all right, I got that. So I have that too. I got the Hare Krishna mantra in front of me. I got pictures of Krishna. So however we could uh, focus on the name we should do that. Yeah. Another should. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, if it was, I've seen devotees that are just walking around, you know, and they're doing this and doing that, it's hard to, because you, you, you lose your concentration. It's hard to be distracted, very easy to be distracted. The mind is, is it's so easily distracted. So try to just focus yeah, on the mantra as much as possible. Vacho Vegam, Manasakroda Vegam. So, the, the, the one who's able to control the urge to speak, the minds demands, the actions of anger. Yeah. What's the best way to, con to control anger? What's the best way to control anger? Huh? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, yeah. Because a lot of times we become angry because someone has mistreated us. Yeah. So, to be forgiving. Kshanti of Yartha Kalatung, this is the, the first symptom of someone who's advancing in Krishna consciousness. The first is forgiveness. And to forgive and forget, that's, to forget is even more difficult. Okay, I forgive, but to forget, that's a tough one. Yeah. But we should, we should see that Krishna is in control of everything. If we see that Krishna is in control of everything, then whatever reversal happens to us, we know Krishna's behind it. So why get angry? It's Krishna's arrangement, and it's for my, for my spiritual growth. So it's good. If some reversal happens to us, it's good, because uh, Krishna's teaching us a lesson, teaching us that he's, he's in control of everything. Whatever happens, it's happening by his arrangement, and, and Krishna's all good, so it's... It's good. It's good for us. It's like, uh, <laughs> I'm remembering Vaisheshika Prabhu a lot this morning, which is very auspicious. <laughs> On book distribution, sometimes when you're distributing books, uh, you'll go through a period where, or you might go through a period where a lot of people don't, don't take books. And because there might be some attachment there, you might even get angry at the people. But he says, there's the there, there's a, a a mantra by which you introduce the book, and there's also an exit mantra or an exit mood, or yeah mantra. He says that if someone doesn't take a book, then you tell them, "Thank you so much for giving me your valuable time. It's been a pleasure meeting you. May you have a blessed life." Yeah, that's a great. I've, I've been using it. It's fantastic because it helps. Because we get, we're, we're, in the nature of the material, we're passionate, so we want to get the results. You know, Prabhupada said these two things go very deep: attachment or sex desire, and anybody remember attachment to the results. They go very deep in the heart. So this helps to become free of the, of the attachment. It kind of calms down the passion. So it's very good. The exit mantra. <laughs> it's very good. So, uh, one is able to control the urge to speak, the mind's demands, anger, the tongue, belly, and genitals. This is the tough one. Yeah. Lust. Prabhupada said, our old enemy, Mr. Lust. Been there a long time. Yeah. Our old enemy. Uh, so, Krishna, he is very good at killing demons, enemies. Yeah. So the more we take shelter of Krishna, we become free of this 
great enemy. Tasma tong in yon yada, nyamya baratashva, patmanam prajyayam, yana vijanama. Therefore, from the very beginning, curb this great symbol of sin, lust, by regulating the senses and, 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 and slay this, this great enemy of lust, formidable enemy known as lust. This is the, the greatest enemy of the soul, actually. Yeah. So, by the mercy of Krishna, by the mercy of the devotees, by uh, taking shelter of Krishna, we become purified of this contamination. It's actually a, it's a perverted reflection of our love for Krishna. Yeah. This is the, the real happiness, is, is this love for Krishna. But it's covered by this. You know, just like imagine if, you, if you, have, uh, you, have an, you have some iron and you have a magnet. Hmm? So the magnet is attracted to the iron, naturally. But if the uh, iron gets a lot of rust on it, eventually there's no attraction at all, zero, because of all the rust covering the iron. But if you get something to scrape that rust off, then eventually the attraction will be there again between the magnet and the iron. So now we have this rusty lust. Yeah? And what we're doing, yeah, rusty, this rust is covering the heart. Rusty lust is covering the heart. So what we're doing when we're chanting Hare Krishna and we're reading Prabhupada's books, we're engaged in devotional service, is we're scraping off this rust. Now there's a lot of rust there. <laughs> so we got to do a lot of scraping. You got to keep on scraping. You got to have that patience. You got to keep on scraping. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And eventually, there'll be no more rust and our attraction to Krishna will be there. Okay? Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments or reflections? Yes, Javita Prabhu. Back, way back to the uh, start of it. By the way, I think it's very, very wonderful class, and I think that you should never prepare for class. You should always give a spontaneous class like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's much good. Oh, yeah. I wasn't expecting to give. Yeah, this. yeah. No, it's 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 great. It just comes straight out. So the 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 point, which you know is, is so essential, the uh, Lord Chaitanya is asking Ramananda Roy. He's in the position of the question. So he asks, of all kinds of distress, what is the most painful? Ramananda Roy answered. Apart from the separation from the body of Krishna, I know of no unbearable happiness. Now, I just want there's a couple of verses expanding on that in the purport. One or two, it'll take the two yeah. minutes. So, one, he, he quotes one from the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Sanatana Goswami. I'm not going to read the Sanskrit. A person who does not worship me, Krishna speaking, a person who does not worship me, who is unduly attached to family and who does not stick to devotional service, must be considered a most unhappy person. Similarly, one who does not associate with Vaishnavas or who does not render service to his superior is also a most unhappy person. So this is Krishna speaking. Mm. And then there's one more. This is, uh, oh no, that was from Bhagavatamrita. And this one is just from Vedic literature. I don't have a quote. Uh, out of all kinds of desirable things experienced in the life of a living entity, association with the devotees of the Lord is the greatest. When we are separated from a devotee, even for a moment, we cannot enjoy happiness. And then there's this one expansion on that. In the Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam, there's one verse describing that which appears twice identically and one with a slight variation. So like three times he's emphasizing, very important. Tuliyama lavenapi naswagam napunar bhavam bhagavat sangyasya martyanam kamatashya. He says that uh, even a moment's association with a pure Vaishnava uh, cannot be compared, you know, these things cannot be compared to not a svarga, going to heaven. Liberation, na punabhavam, not coming back again. That's a way of saying liberation. Uh, Bhagavat sangi sangasya, the association with the sangi of Bhagavan. A sangi is someone who's associated. Association with an associated Bhagavan, an advanced devotee. What to speak of material things that are uh, uh, in this world of death. In other words, the, the things that we value in this plane. So that, that three three times, you know that's an important verse. Mm. So that, and, 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 and that's the book distribution is. You give me the association of Prabhupada, yeah. Krishna, uh, all these personalities. 
hours and hours and hours of association with Prabhupada, because, you know, reading Prabhupada's books, that's association. Yeah. Then what's the example of, of someone who's associated with a non-devotee? If you associate with a non-devotee, it's like being in a, in a cage. With a tiger or a fire or something? Fire. Flame, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's a cage with a lion. Don't want to be in a cage with a lion. <laughs> or fire, jeez. So, association with devotees is so important. Yes, you have a question. We have a microphone coming to you. Thank you for a nice class, Vijay. Um, could you explain the difference? I've been looking this up and I couldn't find a... Um, sufficient answer on the on, online but uh, what is the difference between a sannyasi and a swami a sannyasi and a swami there is no difference it's just the you know, same word just different yeah same it's the same <laughs> okay <laughs> okay it's a little late thank you very much see the brow pod key yeah